I think what you can do is call the meeting to order and else there's no quorum, so there's going to be general discussion. Okay. Now, if there are members of the public here yes. or online, yeah. as long as they understand that it's not an official meeting because, I mean, it's not a meeting in which anything can actually, decisions can be made. Hope that's right. So we've got three. three yep. Okay, but we still don't have a quorum. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. It is 8.08 uh, for the Parks and Conservation Land Board. We do not have a quorum. We have three members. Myself, Jessica Sargent. Rachel Hendrickson. And if you're on mute, Maggie. And Maggie, could you uh, announce your presence? Hi, I've been clicking unmute and it wouldn't um, <laughs> happen, but I'm trying to start the video too. There we go. I'm here. Thank you. So we have three members. Uh, so we do not have a quorum because we need four. Um, so we cannot make any official decisions, but we can have a discussion, um, which I think is important because we are still on the agenda for the July 17th workshop to talk to town council about the land bond. So I'm going to skip approval of minutes because we can't do that and open it up for public comment. We have some folks online. I don't, we have, we yeah. managed that before. We have someone in the And we have someone in the room, but she said no. Okay. And then we've got two people online. Any comments, Debbie or Scott? I don't see any hands. I have no comment. Okay. Go ahead, Scott. You should be able to speak. Just unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you. We can hear you. But you went back on mute. Yeah, I have no comments. At oh. This oh. Time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, though. Good. 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 So none. None, okay. So I'm gonna close. Tables. Okay. Move on to, um, so in your agenda packet, there was, and if you guys want, we have extra packets if you wanna look, if you wanna grab a packet. Um, so in your agenda packet, we did include <laughs> the- Yes, Greg. Oh, so right. what do we do now? <laughs> we can make decisions, we're fine. Now okay. we have a, just now we have a quorum. Now we have a quorum. Yes. So do we wanna- no, there's not. Um, yeah, you can. Rick, do you need a minute before we um, no. discuss minutes? No. Okay. Um, you might still want to wait because since I was not at the last meeting, I would have oh, you'd to stay. Okay. So we'll no wait if they're active or not. Okay. okay. Um, so we are on the back side of your agenda. Uh, just letting folks know that Norm has updated the authorization report to reflect the $800,000 that was approved by town council at second reading for Silverbrook Preserve, which leaves our remaining authorization in the land bond at $13,901.64, which is what I'm calling essentially empty. So those that was online. So, um, that is based on the 2019 land bond. And thank you to Norm for working with us yep. to, I think we, I think we're at a place where it has all the information that we were requesting over time um, because he added the commitments, which is very helpful. So those are funds that have been committed by town council, but have for approval, but have not been well, John down, bonded out. I just have a question. Was there pushback on that at all? Or was it everyone agreed? On the Silverbrook Preserve? Yeah. So at first reading, Councillor Hamill did not vote in support, but he did vote in support at second reading. Um. And I think that that highlighted the need to be very focused about 
what we're asking for, or sorry, what we're recommending. We're not asking for anything. What we're recommending as a board, because the it got a little muddy with the land bond and that project. And I think because it was essentially the last author bit of authorization left in the land bond. So they had some um, questions, understandably, that, you know, should we be allocating the last remaining authorization at one point. Well, and I was just wondering if that if that discussion would point the way to what we're trying to do today, which is get ready for that workshop. I mean, and how we frame things and how we um, communicate things. That's all. I think, yes, it's important, as Rick mentioned, that we need to be in a state of readiness so that when excellent projects like Silverbrook Preserve come up, that we as a town um, have those funds available because they're very unique opportunities that don't come around very often, um, both in the score, it being the highest score that this board has ever done, uh, the size, the connectivity, the leverage um, with Land Remains Future made that project a really top priority, I would say. And by having a new land bond referendum replenish the fund does mean that the town is in a state is in a state of readiness to be able to move swiftly because these are willing sellers often uh, competing at market rates so it's important to have that state of readiness so that the town can meet, meet its goals by taking advantage of these really unique and important properties <clears throat> as they come available I don't think that makes Scarborough unique and a leader that um, one of the few communities in Maine that has this process so that they're able to leverage state and federal funds. Um, whereas a lot of other towns in the state, I don't have a number, rely on appropriations. And that's a much more complicated and lengthy process to have to go through on an individual project basis and appropriations process, I think it really um, sets those communities at a disadvantage for leveraging matching funds, um, state, federal, and private, I should say. So I have another question. It, as we think about, I guess we've moved on to discussing the recommendation for the town council. Um, if, as we think about that, what's our baseline there? So is, are, are, is, do we have to convince people about conservation in general, or is it the amount that the, the amount of in, uh, the increased amount that we have this time and why it's, uh, it's a good idea in terms of cost, if this is going to last a while, this bond fund, it's, you know, we're saving money by doing it now rather than later. I mean, what, so I just, I just want to, I just want to get clear on how, what our, what our baseline is for framing this? I think that's a great question. So you don't have it in front of you. Todd, did you send it around? So this morning, do you want to introduce what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm just trying to spot that. But... Um, so we have received a draft of, it's on the second page. Uh, we have received a draft of the, do you call the ballot language yes. from the town this morning? Uh, it will look very familiar in that it is the same as the 2000 language. And Todd will pull it up. Um, so sorry it wasn't included. We just got it this morning. Um, so the purposes are the same. Hello. Oh. <laughs> the purposes are the same uh, from the 2000 language, which I also, I don't have copies of the other three, but I'm assuming they're the same. Um, so it's it's the same purposes. The Really, the only change would be the $6 million. So I do think that the discussion is going to center around the amount. 
to answer your question, Maggie. And are there, there might be materials from that survey and from that consultant that we can, are points from their um, report that we can act, we can begin to put together. That may give us some material to start with. I do think that this is our opportunity to discuss not only the amount, but the purposes. I don't, I do believe that there'll be a robust discussion about the amount. I don't know if there's going to be be a lot of discussion about the purposes and Karen I don't know how you feel about that I have communicated with Tom Hall related to the ability of this board to recommend language changes and so updating some of the language making it a little more voter friendly a uh, little less wonky <laughs> I would say um, but he he said that he doesn't know how much flexibility there would be in, in recommending changes to the language. I think because there's been a, a history, a, su a successful history of using this language with the land bond, that there is some hesitancy to tinker with something that has been wildly successful in the past. And I think most of the language is on any land bond. There's a certain part that's statutory, the language. Right. You know what I mean? And a lot of it, when you look at any, whether it's a wreck or a fire truck or anything, some of the other stuff is just educational materials and how it's framed on the backside. Um, so, but I do agree with Jessica. I think that purpose and amount, and I think the amount will be the key discussion. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, when it comes time to, I, I guess, to advocate for the, the bond, uh, if, if this passes the town council with that amount, in other words, they agree to put it on on the ballot, then we have, um, I think, a, an opportunity or a responsibility to ensure that the public understands the success, both the success that we've had and the, the purpose. And in other words, that they're really clear um, on what they're voting for. And, um, what's been done with their money in the past that we want to continue to do. So two parts of education, one to the, the town council on why six million, uh, and, and then another part of education to the public to ensure that they understand uh, the success um, and why we need this going forward, why they would want to support it going forward. Karen, can you confirm? I would assume that council understands the purpose of the land bond and why. I would. I'm. I'm guessing this board's efforts really is to educate on why that amount, and then secondly was how the money's been used and how it's been leveraged to meet that purpose. I don't think the purpose is in question. Do you? No, I agree. I think you guys are right. I don't I don't think there's any question about the bond getting on the November ballot. I, th I think it's more about the six million because it is a big, a lot bigger ask. And I think that's the work that we have to do is try to explain and justify why the ask is so big. I think you guys did a great job when you came to finance. Um, and so I think it's just kind of continuing that conversation and emphasizing why we're doing this and why it's been so successful. Um, I, I definitely think there's going to be some pushback. It's a big number. You know, we got a million dollar fire truck and then the police body cams, which is almost another million. So the other factor is, you know, most people don't vote for all three. They're going to turn down one. And so that's one of our, my concerns is, you know, this is a big number that might be easy for people to not support. Um, but that's, I mean, we don't know if three things are going to end up. That's what we'll determine, <clears throat> I guess, next week, which is, I will comment is a little bit, typically we have workshops and we don't have make action that night, but that is actually what is happening next week is we're having a workshop and then immediately taking action during the meeting, which it is what it is, but that's not common. So I just wanted to point that out as well. Right. So the workshop and first reading will happen next Wednesday on the 17th. The public hearing will be on August 21st and the final adoption will be on September 4th. If needed, a public hearing and a second reading could occur on the September 4th date. Um, that's from Tom Hall. So yeah. I just those are those are the dates I had to um as well. So it's good, it's it's pretty quick, I think. 
well, it's pretty quick to get the whatever the final language is going to be for the bond, but then you have whatever the numbers approve, you've had for the rest of September and right. all of October to educate. And that's really well, what I mean is we're going to have our workshop and then it's going directly into first reading. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, right. And the town council meeting. Right. Right, and, right after. Right. And that first read is exactly what it is. It's first read, questions asked, you come back with answers, public hearing on it. Then you have another month to answer any of those questions. And then uh, that's also an opportunity to educate the public and get their questions in and answered. Um, and then final adoption whatever that final language is, is September. So you've got August, you get two months ultimately to, you know, again, I don't think the language is going to come far from this. I think it's really the amount. I would like to add water quality. Oh, it's in there. Sorry. It's in there. Sorry. It's in there. Never mind. Yep. Ignore me. Yep. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> no, that's, I think we discussed those, yeah. those yeah. bullet points last yeah. time and yeah. they hit them all. Yeah. So I have another question. Um, in the past, uh, when a, when this has been approved, uh, a bond has been approved uh, to go to ballot. Um, has there been? Is there a precedent for? Let's say, okay, well, we don't, <clears throat> we're not going to do six million. That's too much. But have they reduced the money in discussion that they will approve? Has that happened before? It ha well, Doug's go ahead. No, I think it can we always happen. get what we asked for. I don't what think we, anything else. We, we we have we have gotten what we asked for. I, I I do think it would be valuable as we continue with these meetings that all of us speak about this as an authorization for bonding as opposed to a bond. Yes. We are not. This should not be equated in any of our minds. I know it's a. I know it's it's a problem for the public that we'll have to deal with. <laughs> We're not asking for a six million dollar bond. Right. We're asking for the authorization. To bond up to six million dollars over some period of time. Yeah. Now, yes, indeed, we'll spend it over time. I mean, I'm not saying we're not some some period. But we are not authorizing a six million dollar bond for the next fiscal year. That's a good point. Yep. Yes, that is a good point, and it's and I don't see any the the length of time in this language anywhere, unless I'm missing it. Well, we don't know the length of time. It is no, as we receive high quality applications that are reviewed by this board and recommended to town council and then approved by town council, um, which none of us have that magic crystal ball <laughs> to be able to uh, to define the, the time. However, I will say that if we authorize six million, it will last longer than if we authorize a smaller amount and if a smaller amount is authorized we'll be coming to town council sooner to replenish the fund i think that's a great point to make yeah i, I think um, another point to make is in terms of how long the money is out there or the authorization is, is out there um we spent about two years uh since 2021 um not spending much because not much was coming before us and then all of a sudden the opportunity arose to make a significant conservation uh, investment uh and that took care of the rest of it so we can't predict when that opportunity is going to arise we simply understand that if we want to get to 30 by 30 we need to be ready to make the investment. I've been highlighting the fact that the timing is that, you know, we have the open space plan coming out in what, December and January. And I like to remind council, this is something we spend money on. This is what we're doing. We're all working towards a goal. And what's the point of doing an open space plan to have a final product with absolutely nothing in the bank to execute it with? And I think that's something that we need to remind them because we have that going on as well. And I know it's not going to all come together right at the end, but it, it's close enough. And I think that's why are we doing an open space plan for if we can't do anything with it? I guess my only comment regarding the amount, and I think Jessica just said it, and I'm trying to figure out how to frame my words here carefully, is that the goal is to become in a state of readiness to meet the goal, correct? I think that educating them on, well, I think we said it last meeting, tell me if I'm wrong, 
no matter, 6 million is not going to get them to their goals. So no matter what, there will be more asks of different amounts, whether it's 6 million today or 2 million today, there's going to be more because six is not going to get us to that, that 30 by 30. Um, and I think it just, for us to be able to do our job, we just have to state that. So it's clear that no matter what, that there'll be more funding asked, no matter what the approval is in this process. I mean, and so that way it's it's not a surprise that you're coming back next year. If they do 2 million, you'll be coming back quick, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it's just choices that are gonna have to, fiscal choices they're gonna have to make on, on their side of the table, I guess, so. Do we have the, the information on how much external money is leveraged compared to ours? In other words, what's our percentage of of the purchases? How much, you know, if we put in eight hundred thousand here, how much does that bring in? Because that we have that's to ask kind of, Sue had in her presentation. So I've updated a spreadsheet. It's in the share drive. I mean, that's that's the sort of what information the that that. Finance folks like to take a look at. Uh, they, it is you know. in general land bond information. It's the ex I think we confirm that. Just then, it. so it's land bond acres amounts six twenty six. Land bond acres. Right. Yeah. So this is my understanding of the history. I used a spreadsheet that was created by Sue in 2022, and I updated it, sticky, based on um, norms. Um, authorization report. So I, I don't know that this is, again, prior to 2022, I just used Sue's numbers. Uh, and then I highlighted, as you recall, uh, there are two projects, Carbo Land Trust projects, that have the potential for full town reimbursement if um, external grant funding comes in. And so that's why those two figures are highlighted in yellow. Up to those full amounts could be reimbursed to the town if that other grant funding comes in. And I think that some of that information is going to come in in the next year or two because they're, they're, federal, they're federal grants and they just take forever. <laughs> So the way this is reading is the town appropriate funding appropriation or bond. The town is over the life of the land bonds is put in seven and a half million dollars. Yes. And then matching funds from whatever source total is six. Is yes. Okay. Simply. So we're yes. doing what fifty five percent. Some somebody can figure out the percentage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it. I would have it in ten minutes. That's good. That's good analysis, and I think it's worth using. I think there are so there are a lot of nuances. That's yeah. Well, the properties that are in there that aren't conservation properties are key. I mean, look, yes, we don't control that money. The town spent hundred yes, percent exactly on two properties at least. Yes, um, I believe three. And that bias, yeah, and that biases. And that affects biases that percent. Yes. So for example, I think the largest was the nearly $400,000 on Alger Hall with zero leverage is going to swing that percentage. Um, and then, and I think the other two, I can update this um, before the uh, workshop if you want me to do that. That would be great. Out there. This is in I, the. I, so I, I think another way to look at this and to, to use in terms of language is that we are in partnership um, through the land, with the land trust and through the land trust with other organizations involved in conservation. It's, it's not Scarborough by itself. But certainly, uh, Scapro is the beneficiary of that partnership. Yes. By the creation of this open space, this conserved area. See, I do think that it would be beneficial to you. Sorry, I'm looking at Andrew because I think that they have that and Scott. I think that the Scarborough Land Trust has a 
good sense of their leverage, but for those projects that aren't Scarborough Land Trust, um, we'd be relying on, on Doug to update those. And I do think we should pull out those that are not conservation oh, and just yeah, be yeah. transparent yeah. about let's, let's look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Spending. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. they were funded through a section in the order, which is a significant to preserve significant historic sites. Okay. Right. Or sites that are considered part of the character of the community. Um, so, but not part of the, it would not be considered part of the 30 30, right. 30 by 30. So, let's keep focusing okay. on that and what constitutes land that would um, fall under that that goal. Yep. We shouldn't try, to, I don't want anybody to be confused. I mean, you know, if, if there's bonding available and the town decide and the town council decides to spend it on something, they're going to decide to spend it on something. Yeah. We can't we can't control that. No. So I'm not I, I we're not trying to suggest that pulling those out is is uh ignoring those. However, it, it is helpful to pull those out to get that ratio of public to private money. Yes. Yeah. So for conservation. For conservation. You're only talking about one property right no, no, no i think that great. there's alder, i believe it's alter hall the beach ridge schoolhouse and the archway are the three yeah. um which i would put under the historic community character yeah Wait. well we don't we don't have the prerogative of carving those out we're an advisory board that advises excuse me we advise the council <clears throat> on the land bond and our input goes to the spending and utilization of that money. And so it's not up to us to carve out one use. We can't say, well, carve out water quality and carve out recreational trails or carve out historic. I feel like we we should just do what the numbers are, not not try to. You think it would confuse the issue? Yeah, I do. I do, and it feels like it's not as open and transparent as it as it should be. So I think the number is fine. I mean, I'm not unhappy with the number that that you just showed on your spreadsheet. So I feel like starting to carve out sections. That was size. So if Alger money does come back, that mm -hmm. that changes the percentages anyway. So I don't feel it's worth. Opening that up. Well, Al also Alger Hall it. could be reimbursed to the That's fund, what I mean. Yeah. Um, in addition to the grant funding for the other projects. I, I also yeah. feel like I can have that in the back. I can have that in the back pocket because I was only talking about answering one specific question. Not right. Carving. Okay. No carve out. Okay. Let's let's not confuse what I said. What I said was not all of those properties were conservation properties. So if, if anyone wants to know what percent of how much leverage the conservation funds have generated, those shouldn't be counted when so calculating that number. You'll, you'll actually have both numbers available if the question's asked. That's right. That's what you're saying. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying you look at this and you say, oh, it looks like we're about 55% funded from the town, 55% mm -hmm. from the town, 50 and now 45% mm -hmm. in the public. And that's not right. The town chose to buy three things. In terms of conservation, that's not correct. In terms of the actual use of the funds, yes, it's absolutely correct. So I, I don't want to confuse things. I wasn't trying to play any games. If we're looking for, to answer one specific question, how much leverage do these funds provide for conservation? Then that's the way to go. That's all I'm saying. There is legitimacy to that because the leverage for conservation is different than leverage for historic or, or basically mm -hmm. historic because we did the town did all of the money for Al Jahal and the Arch. And so I'm not sure about Beatridge. I can't remember what the what the numbers were on that. Yeah, it, it makes sense to do that. I think that would be helpful information to have at the Just workshops next week. So Doug, if you could um do you yeah. need me to send it to you or can you get into the shared drive? Oh I can get I also think that we we can trust the voters to make a good decision. I think that 
land acquisition, I think the Parks and Conservation Land Bond is something that the inhabitants of the town have endorsed as being important to them. And I, <laughs> excuse me, I think they'll let us know if that's an amount of money that they feel they want to commit or not. And if it doesn't get approved, it doesn't mean that we won't do any. It just means, well, I mean, theoretically, we could bring each property back to the voters to vote on it specifically. It's a difficult way to do business because a seller would have to wait for that whole process to take place. And then a potential buyer has to say, well, I know you really, really, really want to sell your property. And sometimes there are circumstances, health or, or estate issues or financial issues that require some urgency. And if the seller is asked to wait for six months or longer for a bond to get approved, not knowing the whole time if it will happen or not, it makes it really hard to negotiate to, to buy the property. So that's why it's important to have the that question is, do you want to fund it or don't? If they say, if the voters say no, well, you know, we'll, we'll be informed by that. We'll, you know, maybe they'll approve a smaller number or maybe this won't be, maybe this is what they want. We'll know, we'll find out, we'll hear their voice. So I don't, I don't feel like we should be alarmed about that or put off by it, but there are gonna be questions that we do need to answer. So in, in that light, I, this I, is valuable. Yeah, I think um, one one caveat, and that is, it's been three years or longer since we've been before the voters. Five. Five years, and the town has changed significantly in terms of residents in those five years. So we need to keep in mind that there are a fair number of people out there that we have to educate kind of from scratch. In, in other words, we're not necessarily clear where they where they stand. So we, we know we have a large group of folks that have consistently voted um, for land conservation through the bonds. But we, we've got a bunch of new people in town that we have to make sure we reach out to them uh, or they have the opportunity to understand what it is that we're actually asking and the importance to the town. So that's, that is an education process of a, of a group of people. And I think that that process starts next at the workshop where we talk about the benefits of, of conservation 